So we have seen the optimization procedure for our storage. And now we want to look at the case of the farms. Remember, we are dealing with RBC. And in the case of RBC, we are just dealing with two agents only. And so let's talk about the farms now. The farms produce goods mm, using capital K, labor L, and technology A. The production function is of the top of Douglas type, and the output in period T, T is given as the equation that you can see there. You have capital raised to power alpha, and then uh, E is by Z T L T is by one minus alpha. So here we are assuming that the alpha and one minus alpha must respect the uh, constant return to scale uh, uh, assumptions. The resource constraint for the economy is described with respect to output, which is divided among consumption C and investment. So you can see you have CT plus IT equals YT. And then there is a law of motion for capital, which is given as capital in period T plus one is equal to one minus delta. Remember we said delta is the rate of depreciation, depreciation of capital plus IT. Okay, so, and um, so technology assumed to evolve as an auto regressive process. Now was Z is rho Z minus one plus epsilon. Epsilon is the, is the representation for the technology shock and it is a white noise disturbances, all right? So I've described the uh, behavior of the farm. That means you see the uh, objective function, then we saw the constraint. The next thing is to now optimize. That means find the solution to the system. So here, like we did before, you have this function, output, and then we have the cost. Okay, so what we do now is to find this first other conditions. And in this case, when we do that with respect to capital, we'll get the equations as shown here. RT hmm, equals, that is the rate of return, uh, yes, equals all of this. That means by the time you do the differentiation of that equation, subject to, uh, no, uh, with respect to capital, this is what you get. If you do with respect to labor, then you have the wage rate, the nominal wage rate, which is given as this. Now, from what we know, it means we have two equations from this system. And therefore, from what we have said, we can now constitute a set of equations Mm -hmm. resulting from these two uh, uh, behavior of household and farms, and then the resulting optimization. And so the equations are as follows. They are from, the, uh, from our optimization. The first one is the Euler equation. The second one is the labor Consumption, uh, consumption equation. And then the third one is the constraint, the resource constraint. You can see what is on the left and then what's on the right. And then uh, the next one is talking about technological shock that we, we told you that is uh, AR1 uh, uh, process. Okay, and then you have the marginal product of capital that's written this way. 
we just brought it down, and then the marginal product of labor. The last equation is the market clearing condition. All right. Now, these are the equations emanating from uh, the procedures that we have followed. Okay, so the next thing is how do we solve this system? So, the solution now we said the model is a system of nonlinear equations which cannot be solved analytically, hence, the need for nonlinear approximation. All right. So there are several methods to address this problem in reality. We have linear approximation, we have solving system of linear differential equations, we have extended path solution to nonlinear models, we have linear quadratic dynamic programming, value function, iteration, and perturbation method for higher order approximation. Now, uh, in what follows, which I talk briefly about linear approximation, because this is what is generally used. Now we have been doing uh, a perturbation with higher order approximation uh, of recent. Okay, so but I will just briefly mention uh, what you have to do. In other words, we have to linearize all these uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven equations because you could see that they are mostly nonlinear equations. And then we have to linearize them so that we can estimate our parameters. All right. So, uh, like I said, we just refining to log linearization in this system, and we are using Taylor series. So, what we have done here is to show the different steps for you to log linearize a particular equation. We have taken the example of uh, where you will use uh, MacLaurin and so on just to explain, but the usual one is the Taylor series expansion. All right. And the message here is that all your equation have to be linearized. And if you are using Taylor, there are three steps. First, you take the log of your equation. Secondly, you consider the steady state version of the log. Steady state version means uh, at, at the point in which uh, the T have been removed from all the variables. And then you solve you know, for the parameters there. And then the third is to take the difference using the fact that xt equals the difference between the log of that variable at time t less the steady state value of the x. So for instance, I have here uh, yt, which is uh, the production function. And if you want to log, uh, you want to log linearize this one, see what you do. Just take the log of them and it's just simply equals to this. And then steady state version. Now means that we are not putting T uh, into function. So that's why you just write everything the same, but removing the T, the subscript T, indicating the time in which we are talking. So if you now take the difference between the, the log and the log with that T, then you have this uh, equation. And then that equation, if you look at them, you can rewrite as this final equation. So, so if you look at it, it's log, log yt minus log uh, y will give you small yt. So that means we have transformed the dependent variable there to its uh, log linearized forms. Now, from this end, right from this point now, you cannot take the total differential. Okay, so remember this is it again. And taking the total differential is simply you take the differential of that 
variable, the partial derivative of that variable with respect to the variable in question multiplied by its differential. And then we apply the log rule and, and the other uh, rules there. So that is how you will successfully define, uh, take your total differential. The total differential means you now add everything together. And so that's what we have. So the lesson here is just to show you that all the equation that we have, the seven system of equation is just um, uh, non-linear equations. And we need to transform them to linear form so that we can now run our analysis with it. And so it is this set of equations that are thrown into us, uh, our software in order to get it uh, solved and then and all the other things we want to do. Now, the same goes on and it's just uh, how to do it by hand. Now, after doing this, you now have your equations. But the, the thing that was common to RBC at, at that time, when it was very popular, is that all the parameters were assigned values. That is what we call calibration. We now look for data either from the literature or from other works from similar uh, economies, okay? So that we can ensure a consistent, uh, that is a uh, value that are consistent with some long run stylized facts and some micro uh, estimates. Okay, so, um, and if you do that, for instance, we have um, in this example, we have about six uh, parameters, alpha, beta, delta, C, rho, and uh, sigma, okay? And we have defined the meaning is there, and then the value that we gave to them from uh, literature are uh, indicated. So if we throw this value into our model and we uh, run with the example of a uh, dynary, we are going to get one of the results we get is the movement of simulated variables. There's one because there are several results that you can get. We will look at that when we are talking about the practical exercises. Okay, so you have all the variables in the system are right here, and then you can see the values for the mean, the standard deviation, the variance, the skewness, and the courtesies. All right. And that's it. And so we, uh, also in the practical, we will show you an example with impulse response function because um, this will form a very uh, critical aspect of this analysis because you are not looking at uh, the values of the parameter and testing the t-statistics or so. No, what we are doing is that you, uh, looking at the impulse response function as well as variance, uh, variance decomposition. Uh, and from there, judge the behavior of the variables and then be able to give and see what happens to the economy when one of them is shocked by one uh, standard deviation, okay? And, and so that's the importance. You can look at them on, on all the graphs at the same time, see what happens to one another. So that will be the description for a real business cycle model. Then we now go to module four, where we want to 
talked about the real DIG model itself. Now, the new Keynesian DIG model, that is the title. Now, recall that the shortfalls in RBC led to extensions of the model to incorporate more shocks. Don't forget, we said for RBC is only technology that was the shocks. But in RBC, which was assumed to be uh, real, but in New Keynesian, we have added more shocks. And most of the shock added are classified as nominal shocks. Okay, so the, this New Keynesian economics, let's start from the New Keynesian economy itself, is inspired by John Maynard Keynes in the 1930s, following the Great Depression. 